Hi, I'm Elizabeth Gearhart. I'm here with Richard Gearhart, founder and owner of Gearhart Law. And we want to talk a little bit now about what's the difference between a patent search and a freedom to operate search, because they're both searches of the patent database. So Richard, what would you do? When would you do one? And why would you do one and not the other? Or how does that work? So a patent search is a search that's geared especially to determine whether or not a project is patentable. And so in that case, we're looking at the other patents that we find, um, otherwise known as the prior art. We're looking at the prior art to determine whether a particular invention is likely to be uh, granted patent protection by the US Patent and Trademark Office. Freedom to operate search, on the other hand, is a little different. That issue has to deal with whether or not the invention infringes a third party patent. And so in that case, if you're an infringer of a third party patent, then you take a risk by proceeding with the project that you could end up getting sued by the third party who owns the patent. And so that's obviously an undesirable uh, consequence. And so it's something that you know every uh, product designer, entrepreneur needs to take into consideration. Patents only last 20 years, right? right. So let's say this was 25 years ago, it's very close to what I want to do now and I do a freedom to operate, and that's the only thing I really find that's what I'm doing, Can I? am I okay then? Like, am I free to operate? Well, you're right in that we're looking at different things when we look at patentability versus um, freedom to operate. So with patentability, we look at the whole patent and what it teaches, all of the drawings, all of the text, and it doesn't matter whether or not the patent is still in force, even if the patent has lapsed because it's past its you know, 20 year life or because a maintenance fee hasn't been paid, it still counts as prior art against your invention. And the examiner can use that to reject your application when you're trying to get a patent. Freedom to operate search is different because only patents that are still in force, that it still has um, uh, validity and term uh, can be enforced against you um, as an inventor. So for example, uh, if a patent has 10 years of term left, then that means that the patent is still in effect for 10 years. And if it covers your invention, then the inventor can use that patent against you in court. So we look at different things. We look at whether or not the patent is still, um, still active. And another part of it is we look at the claims. So whereas the patent search focuses more on the whole document, freedom to operate focuses uh, a bit more on the claims. And the claims are what determine the scope of coverage of the patent. And so in that case, we're looking to see whether those claims cover your invention or not. So it's really two different concepts. And when we do patent searches for mechanical inventions, Usually, if there's something that's really close, we'll look at the claims too, and maybe not draft a formal legal opinion on infringement, but at least advise our client that there's claims out there that could cover their invention. And so they need to very carefully consider whether or not they're going to proceed or whether they're going to approach the other company for a license and just exactly what that strategy is. So in another scenario, so... I want to invent, I don't know, a cart on wheels, but that's been patented. That was patented in like 1920. So I can't get a patent on it because it's been patented by somebody else. But I can make it and sell it right. because the patent has expired. Exactly. So that's so I'm free to operate my business, but I can't get a patent on that. Right. So and it's kind of the difference, right? So if you, if you do come with an idea and you can't get a patent on it, and you want to do it anyway, then you should really do a freedom to operate, right? Right. And for a lot of inventions, there's enough crossover that we look at both aspects of it. Um, there are some freedom to operate questions that are more complicated, depending on the technology, and it really does require a different focus. But for most of our entrepreneurial clients, there's enough overlap between the ideas that if we see something when we're doing a patent search that could pose a freedom to operate threat, we let the client know. So I guess another thing to say too would be when you get a patent, if you can get a patent on it, you can block other people from making and selling it. 
when you do a freedom to operate, what you're looking for is nobody can block you from making and selling it, right? right? Who do we talk to if we want to figure this out? Well, of course, you should contact Your Heart Law. Uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions you have about searching and freedom to operate or any other intellectual property questions. You can reach me at 908-273-0700 or check out our website at gearheartlaw.com.